That's an easy one. Now, that brings up another question. There's been lots of times, and, and I can think of three or four right now, where cops and sheriffs didn't keep their oath of office. And we all know about it. One happened in uh, Kent State University in like 1967. There were some students protesting the Vietnam War. The National Guard showed up and started shooting them. Killed about seven of them. Killed them! Unarmed students! Do you know how many people went to jail or got tried or even charged with that? Zero. 1992, Randy Weaver lived with his family in Ruby Ridge, Idaho. Do you know what Randy Weaver wanted there? To be left alone. That's all. They come in and try to get him to work for him to get the air to be an undercover narc to expose the Aryan nation in a neighboring community, and Randy told him to go to hell. And so they decided to go after Randy. And they set him up, and uh, lo and behold, uh, about 150 federal agents converge on his home after Marshall Deegan was shot and killed in a, a shootout the first day where they killed Randy Weaver's son. The next day, they start shooting at everybody and they kill Randy Weaver's wife. Now, we all know that. Somebody, well, let me go on to the next one, then I'll say somebody. Then a year later, exactly a year later, in Waco, Texas, uh, a bunch of kooks and nuts are held up in the Davidian compound. And so the FBI goes in there after they had a shootout with the BATF. The FBI comes in and says, we want, we have news for David Koresh. He's no longer in charge of this incident. We are. And then in about a week, it blows up and goes to fire. And they go, gosh darn it, that gun David Koresh did it. He had a suicide pact. I've actually spoken with five survivors of that compound fire, personally. And there was never any suicide pact. Never. Never even talked about it. And, uh, the bottom line on all three of those incidents, somebody wearing a badge, somebody in uniform should have stopped it. There were no heroes there. There were no uh, officers who kept their oath of office. If the sheriffs had remained in charge, nobody would have been killed, the laws would have been enforced, and everybody would have gone home. And the bad guys would have gone to jail, but few there may have been. Uh, and there may not have been any. But what do we know about this? Well, let me tell you my answer about the constitutional sheriff. If we look back to 1958, we'll see something that happened, uh, again, quite horribly uh, in American history. A woman in Montgomery, Alabama, an American citizen, was arrested. And why? Because she had the audacity to not get her seat to a white man. She wouldn't get to the back of the bus. She refused. Somebody wearing a badge should have kept her from going to jail. But it was somebody in a badge who swore an oath to the Constitution that arrested her, took her to jail. She was booked in, fingerprinted and photographed just like any other criminal. You see, a constitutional sheriff at that time would have got on the bus, sat down next to Rosa Parks, would have shaken her hand and said, Mrs. Parks, what you did here today took a lot of courage. I really admire you for it. And then, he doesn't stop there. He makes sure she gets home safely. You see, that's the job of a constitutional sheriff. He takes her home. And then he makes sure that her husband's shotgun is loaded because <laughs> there might be trouble in the town. And they're, giving, they're going to give her the, that family, the Parks family, extra patrol all night long and through the next day. But they can't be there every minute. So he tells Mr. Parks, make sure your shotgun's ready to go. And he says, in fact, he even says, the constitutional sheriff says, you do have a shotgun, yes, and it is loaded, right? He's a sheriff. It doesn't do you any good. It's not loaded. <laughs> so it's loaded. 
Let's go back to this. Look on page uh, five. It says New York versus United States. Just, Justice Scalia is talking about the New York versus United States case of, about a year and a half prior to this. Look at that. We have held, however, that state legislatures are not subject to federal direction. Don't you wish your state legislature knew that? We should be giving this to who? Every state rep and state senator all across the country. That's what you can do. These cost me money to get made. If you want to uh, buy one, I want you to keep this one. If you want to buy another one, just put a dollar or a couple of dollars back on my back table and we'll send these to people. I already have somebody that has sent this to every county commissioner in Idaho. County commissioner. Well, what's that got to do? They're not, a, they're not the state legislature. No. They're the county legislature. Even more so, you're going to see how that plays in. Okay, go over to page um, 9. Right where that bold statement is on the second paragraph. Hence, a double security arises to the rights of the people. The different governments will control each other. What? The different governments will control each other? Is that a city council? Is that a different government? Of course it is. How about the county government? Of course. How about the school boards? They say they're completely controlled by the federal government. That is a lie and it's a piece of propaganda. We vote for them. They work for us. And, and I don't know. I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, I guess, I believe in Arizona. <laughs> and I still think we can handle our own education without government oversight from Washington. <laughs> Scalia clarifies the Commerce Clause. He clarifies the Supremacy Clause. He clarifies how the EPA was ruled to be unconstitutional in the early 1970s. Read that for yourself later. And he also says that the Constitution, and this is my favorite quote from this decision, but the Constitution protects us from our own best intentions. It divides power among sovereigns and among branches of government precisely so that we may resist the temptation to concentrate power in one location as an expedient solution to the crisis of the day. End quote. Let me tell you real quickly what Judge, Ro what Judge Scalia, Justice Scalia said in his decision. The federal government, this is on the bottom of page 13, start there where it says the federal government, may neither issue directives requiring the states to address particular problems, nor command the state's officers, or those of their political subdivisions, cities, counties, school boards, whatever, to administer or enforce a federal regulatory program. It matters not whether policy making is involved, and no case-by-case -case weighing of the burdens or benefits is necessary. Such commands are fundamentally incompatible with our constitutional system of dual sovereignty. But all of this is based on notification and the states having the courage. It's not a matter of jurisdiction. It's not a matter of authority. It's a matter now of constitutional knowledge and having a little bit of intestinal fortitude. That's all we lack now. Oh, and somebody's going to go, oh my gosh, if we stood up to the federal government, they'll cut off federal funding. Thank God they will. Because we're going to do the same thing. What do you think they're going to do? Now, if I could close with just two quick things. That part that says case by case weighing of the burdens and benefits came from Judge John Rowe. When I was being cross-examined in his courtroom by the federal attorney, she stopped and at one point she said, Why, Your Honor, why in just the first four months of the implementation of the Brady Bill background checks, we denied 250,000 felons from gaining access to guns in this country. You are! Oh, wow. And I'm sitting there going, Why are there 250,000 felons on the streets? <laughs> and, and I'm, while, I'm, while I'm daydreaming that, Justice Judge Roll interrupted me, and he's rebuking the federal attorney. And he said, Counselor, do not try to pretend in this courtroom 
that your statistical analysis somehow equates to constitutionality. That's the type of man we're talking about here. Now, on page one of my book, it asks a question. And it's pursuant to the quote from Thomas Jefferson. When all governments should be drawn to Washington as the center of all power, it will render powerless to checks provided to become as venal and oppressive as the government from which we separated. My question to every sheriff, every peace officer, and all of you is when government becomes venal and oppressive, to whom can the people turn for peace, safety, protection, and freedom, if not the very individual who swore in God's name to protect your constitutional rights? He is the ultimate protector in your county. If he is off, then we've got to go to other nullifications. But nullify we will, and nullify we can. And uh, in every speech that I give across America, I close with what Dr. Skousen taught me in police training. Please remember, while I share this, what I call America's political prayer, while I share this with you now, I want you to remember that I learned this as police training. And at one point, he, he handed me his book, The Making of America. And he said, promise me that you'll teach these things to your children. I have. And I teach them all across America now. And I've actually started teaching them to my children and my grandchildren. And the oldest grandchild is not even four and a half yet. <laughs> but I will tell you, my first grandchild was born on the 4th of July. And her name is Liberty. And I dedicate this to the Founding Fathers, to Dr. Stalin, to Judge Roll, and to each of you, that you know that America still has a constitution, that we still have hope, and that from my heart to yours, freedom and God-given liberties are what this whole movement is about. This little, what I call America's political prayer goes like this. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, to ordain and establish this Constitution for the United States of America. And that's the last one is the eagle. Long may she be free. Sheriff in America followed uh, the principle that he lives daily. <laughs>